I guess you got the invite. You're muted, Cindy. Cindy, you're muted. There I am. Here I am. Hi. <laughs> I found the uh, agenda online at the town committee section. That's where it goes. I didn't know that until I looked. <laughs> you learn something new every, every month. <laughs> every day. And I think it'd be fantastic to go to Croatia and play pickleball. Wasn't that, isn't that cool? That's very cool. <laughs> <On a> yacht. <laughs> I didn't, it wasn't clear. Do you play it on the yacht or do you like dock and play somewhere in Croatia? I think it's probably on the yacht. You, you think know, so? it's pretty yeah, because I went on a cruise, I don't know, five or six years ago, and they had a pickleball court taped out on the deck. But that's a cruise. <laughs> I mean, there's a cruise and a yacht. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. I don't know how he's going to do it. I kind of, I know the guy pretty well. I've taken, you know, the, he's the one that gave the clinics last year. You know, when I had the professionals come in. And now he's branched off and he's doing all these. He does it in Costa Rica. He goes to Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was pretty cool though. <laughs> yeah, I uh you know, I, I've been to Croatia, but I'd go again. Yeah. I'm going again. I'm going in June. I'm going in May. Oh, you are? Months. Yeah. I have friends that get this yacht every year and so <laughs> usually they go to other places, but they invited us to the, the Croatia. I don't think we're playing pickleball on the deck. I don't know how big this boat is. Are you going on the Game of Thrones? I don't think we're playing pickleball in Croatia or anywhere. Are you going on the but Game I of Thrones pickleball. tour in Dubrovnik? Yeah. I've been to Dubrovnik a long, long time ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just checking. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, Dave cannot city. make it. Oh. He, how about Lindsay? It's ski week. Um, I've not heard from Lindsay. You know, I haven't heard either because I was picking him up and bringing him to the meetings. But since we've had the Zoom meetings, I can't remember if he was on the last meeting or he not. He was here last time. He was. Okay. There he is. Yep. Oh, okay. Oh, there's Rita. <laughs> hey, Rita. Are you, there, uh, are you there, Lindsay? <laughs> Karen, did you... <clears throat> I can't talk. Karen, did you see my note? I'll be in San Francisco all day tomorrow. Yeah, that's fine. I'm not in any hurry. I'm, I, I could come by tomorrow or even this weekend. I just need to remember. That's my that's <laughs> my problem. So we if we just pick a because you said you'd be home tomorrow night, right? I'll be home tomorrow night. Yeah. Well, I, if I put it in my calendar, actually, what time? And then I'll put it in my calendar and maybe I'll remember. <laughs> six six o'clock. I don't know. You name a time because I'm home all night. Okay. I'll come by at seven. How's that okay. sound? Okay. All right. Thanks. All right. Okay. Uh, Lindsay, are you with us? Rita? I do not know what's wrong with my voice. Might be a short meeting. Okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get started. If it's okay with everybody. It is. I'm going to call the meeting on order 734. Um, we don't have anybody from the public here. So I assume there's no oral communications. You know, I have a question. Um, given that we went to Zoom, oh, okay, this one doesn't say that it's at the schoolhouse. It says only virtual participation, no question, because I was worried that if someone showed up at the schoolhouse, we wouldn't be there, but. Well, actually, on the website, it does say this, that it's at the schoolhouse. Oh, it does? Oh, because yeah. the, the, um, 
the form that you click on, I mean, or the, whatever these are, the, 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 the agenda, the, the agenda doesn't say it. It just says zoom. Well, it doesn't say it's not there, but if you just go to the calendar, it'll um, say on the, the website, schoolhouse. It'll say his location. Yeah, I think historic. we're going to have to correct that. We're, um, we were, we were the first committee uh, to uh, do the Brown Act, uh, have a meeting under the non-Brown Act rules. So Carrie and I were going back and forth about what we could and couldn't do and what I was supposed to do versus now what the town is gonna do. So I think there's some things that are falling through the cracks. So I'll make a note of that. Um, okay, uh, approval of minutes. Uh, any comments around the minutes? <clears throat> nope, I thought they were good. I thought so too. I I move to approve the minutes from I January sixteenth. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, I have no new business that I was aware of. <clears throat> Other than I can't talk. <laughs> Excuse me. I have no idea what's going on. Um, so we can just jump into old business, I guess. Okay. Unless somebody has new business. Remember, okay. as a town manager committee now, we can add anything to the agenda. Um, we want to, even on the night of the meeting. So oh, that's good. Um, even that's if it's dangerous. published, something comes up, we can add it to the agenda. We can't vote on it, but we can talk about it. We can do a lot of things. So remember, we have a lot more flexibility. Okay, old business. Uh, a proposal for a community playground. Um, I exchanged emails with Katie. Uh, she kind of came out of the, you know, holiday uh, uh, busyness and uh, asked me kind of what the status was. I told her we were waiting for her basically because the last step in the Parks and Rec was to um, put a new survey together. You recall? Yeah. And get it out on like the PV forum, get a better, broader base of feedback, <clears throat> really try and gauge the interest. <clears throat> ah. um, she asked if I would recommend to the town council, and I said no. I said, Parks and Rec is not ready to do that. Um, I just got a note from her today that she is going to go directly to the town council. So I don't know what that means. Um, I don't think the town council will be very appreciative or supportive of that. Mm. Um, she has that right as a resident, but if they ask Parks and Rec, I think our response will be, you know, it's in consideration, but at this point in time, we cannot recommend it. We so, don't have enough participation to recommend it yeah. well I, enough resident feedback enough yeah. resident resident feedback resident no, no. feedback i mean she did well, do that survey but it wasn't clear how many were portola valley residents yeah <clears throat> do we even have a proposal i mean i actually am not sure i could tell you what what they would be even be voting on or well what they know. what they presented at that one meeting oh, and what, what was it december was that, so you think that was a design and, and are they, are they really going to go to the, the town council and ask for approval to, well, for what? To renovate the... I, what she wants is approval to go ahead and uh, do further work on the conceptual design. Um, and, you know, just, I have to see what her note said, but... Let's see. 
She said, um, kindly receiving your support and recommending the approval of the project to the city council. That's all she said. So I said, I cannot make that recommendation. So. Um, was it was it clear that it's really about just showing the resident support and then it would get moved forward with, because she had a design and we, we recommended that she change the, you know, the presentation of the design in terms of the colors that she was using and, and fit it more into the Portola Valley um aesthetic yeah, and, and yeah color scheme, yeah and all that i mean we did provide feedback on it and then she also was to make it clear that the funding would be private funding and fundraising versus town money so and that she all did. she did yeah. reiterate that she said i understand that the city has no funds and that she's willing to commit to raising private funds um and that she just thinks it's uh, good for the community and uh, good for the youth. I mean, it was really just, I'm. she just wants our support. Well, I, you know, I, I think it's a good idea. And I think the playground, I mean, I, again, we talked about it's 15 to 20 years old, and there will be things that need updating and modifying and changing and all of that. And we also have, and maybe this is on your list, Patty, to talk about this whole master plan, you know, the whole master plan of the town, as well as, you know, our request for, rec, you know, the study on recreational facilities as we increase the population. So it, it yeah. fits with all of that fits yeah, into and, it and i've talked to sarah about this offline and um she is aware of what katie is trying to do um <clears throat> she is supportive of it in concept but she kind of goes to your point karen it's a bigger thing than just the playground i mean if we're going to do something like that we really he just take a step back and redo the general plan for the town center and take into account all of the needs that are being presented. Um, new playground, dog park, um, new courts, um, you know, and I'm sure there's, there's more. Skate, skateboard park. <laughs> really? Skateboard park? Okay. <laughs> um, Bocce ball, bocce ball. Another horseshoe pit. That's the right. The one we get is so overused. Um, bocce. I'll bocce, start a bocce, bocce league. Would be a cool. social cocktail bocce league. I I would love a bocce court. Yep. Um, so it's it's part of a bigger thing, and I just do not believe that the town council. Well, I don't think she'll get it even on the agenda. But um, I can't believe that the town council would say yay to something like that that needs a bigger perspective. So, so I my, know they won't my, put out a lot of feedback from the town residents. That's what we felt. You know, remember when we tried to do the pickleball courts, they didn't feel like we had contacted enough people in all the things that we did. They're very conservative with that. My my recollection about the survey, Patty, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that you offered to help her yeah, with did. that survey, right? I did. I did. And I said, I'm I'm here. I'll help you put the questions together. You know, I'll put it on the forum. I'll get it out to all the communities as best we can. But she Okay. She did not elect to um take advantage of that offer. So um, I mean, I don't know what to tell her other than what I've already told her is the Parks and Rec, while we're supportive, cannot, you know, um, put forth our recommendation for the project. And if she wants to go directly 
to the town council. That's her prerogative as a president. So, if anybody's got anything else, let me know. Okay. Hey, let's have a review of our fantastic trivia night. Great job. Yeah. yeah. Bravo, bravo. You guys awesome. did a great job. Thank you. <laughs> that was really, really fun. Yeah, we got tons of great feedback, good positive feedback from just about everybody too, you know. So anyway, I thought it was all good. It was. People, there people are asking team? when the next one is. They're, you are know, they're saying, is it way? just once a year or is it gonna be twice a year? Oh right. no, really? <laughs> Well, we because no. we had it in May last year, so we it didn't was, do it exactly a year later. So it was, it was nine months. Yeah, I, I, uh, I also kind of that was how I led. It was like either annual or semi-annual. I don't know. We don't know. Right. Maybe right. Every nine and, months. Yeah, and I mean, so we had. I mean, we were all there. We had over a hundred people. I think one of the things that's, um, and Cindy, you probably don't know this, but um, we got. Seven hundred dollars, seven hundred and one dollars in donations. Six. Whoa, seven hundred and six dollars. Yeah, seven oh six. I don't know who Which gave is, us like the one dollar. <laughs> well, that's okay. Um, which is fabulous because what that means is that we can figure out how to do more of these because people will donate to participate. Yeah. Um, which I think is great. Um, and it, I. I'm still going to throw this out here is if we want to consider a bingo night because it might attract more families or we should even say bingo, I don't know, time. We don't need to say night because it could be like from four oh. to seven and it could be, uh, you know, popcorn, pizza and prizes or you know something like that 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 might attract both the older and the younger crowd or um another kind of game night or like name that tune which would be like trivia but we would just play music and we could have teams that are guessing or if we should just stick to trivia for now because we know it works or anyway well i was thinking of other ones too i mean there's also um, this is more adult themed, but like a uh, a Las Vegas night or something, like poker, oh, a casino, um, a casino like night, a casino night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, those those are always kind of fun. I think they're a little more expensive because you got to get the tables and the dealers and. But I know there's places that do that and they just do the whole thing. So I don't know if we looked into what it would cost to do like a casino night. Um, I thought about board games, but that's kind of tough to do. Uh, I like bingo. I mean, not personally, but I like the idea <laughs> of a bingo night. Well, <laughs> My grandmother would be, you know, she'd come out of her grave for that one. Um, <laughs> name that tune is fun. Yeah, I talked about that um, just even last week, and because I have somebody that would be perfect for for that. Though we we, it's, it, I'm not sure if it could be as broad. Uh, you can try to do that with the genres, but but you basically kind of have one subject the whole night. Um, so it might be some a little bit challenging, but I think we could definitely do that. Pull that off. It's Mike Chang. Mike Chang is like this got this yeah. encyclopedia knowledge of seventies <laughs> music. And I'd have to get them to kind of, you know, get out of the seventies, but um, in the early eighties. No. But anyway. <laughs> yeah. I still remember. Was it his fiftieth birthday party? Sixtieth. Yeah. Yeah. Fiftieth. Yeah. 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 Well, both. That was a wild party. Yeah. <laughs> a lot right. of sunny and share. Um, right. So we talked about that. You know, we can definitely. It's on the table. Let's put it that way. There was a little bit of concern about. Um, just you know how whether it would get this have the same effect as the trivia night you know just because it's a single subject but but anyway it's worth trying 
I also like the casino night. Um, I don't know if we have to go for a full casino. I've seen that at, at events. And you're right, we'd have to get a roulette table then and, you know, some other things. We could just I literally just go for like a blackjack and poker or something. Sure. Yeah. I have I mean, you can have a <laughs> Sorry, say that again. I have hundreds of chips. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Poker so do we, the, um, I mean, we've done, um, in fact, we had a, a Texas Hold'em poker tournament just like a month ago or so, just with probably 20 people. Um, so, you know, that's always popular. Um, Tex uh, blackjack is a little easier. You know, I think te uh, Texas Hold'em tournaments, are, you know, people can be pretty good at it. Right. There's a skill associated with it that maybe not everybody would appreciate. Plus, I'm not sure how broad it is for in this community, you know, to do something <laughs> like that. Well, uh, it it does seem like it's a lot more work because you're not having everybody compete around the same yeah. thing, right? Like you're gonna have to have a bunch of different tables somehow i i don't i mean i i think it would be fun but we should it's it's it could be it could be harder with four four of us volunteering you know so <laughs> maybe we get more volunteers you know it's yeah. hard to get people on a committee but i i think if we got you know i think we could all reach out and find a couple more people that would be pretty engaged that's what I think. But I mean, John, you've got your whole crew. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's no question. I mean, again, if it was Texas Hold On or just uh, casino, and this that's perfect for my crowd. Um, the, again, that's why I'm less concerned about that than and whether how that would come across to the community. You know, that we're basically doing something that's gambling. <laughs> oh, I think the community. <laughs> I think it was fun. I don't know. Okay. Maybe I'm being a. No, you think, you I mean, think there's people. My friends would do it. My, my friends would be up for it. <laughs> I mean, we wouldn't use real money. Sure. Yeah, we give people, you know, whatever it is, $20 in fake money, right? And chips. Yeah. And chips. Yeah. You, know, you have a winner. You have a winner. It doesn't mean you, you don't take home the money, right? You just win and we can have a prize. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Know, well, um, would anybody like to look into that, or what should we do? I mean, the thing is timing too. So remember, we've yeah. got the picnic. Picnic on the twenty first of September. That's our next big thing. <clears throat> so probably that's seven months from now. What? Right. So that's seven months. That's the way. Which is yeah. right yeah. about when we would be targeting right about something. When we think about something, but. Right. I mean, we'd either do something in between or we'd probably have to wait till this time again next year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That makes it annual again. I, this is my concern with other things too, is uh, I'm not sure no matter what it is that we can do it more than every nine months I mean, six months even seems short, especially if you throw in the, the picnic. Picnic. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so that's why it, it feels annual. And therefore, um, we got to choose carefully what we do. Yeah. I, I, I was thinking, um, and this was not about casino night, because I do think casino night has to be night, that if there was a way to do something, um, but I think it's too soon for us, but if we, but planning maybe next year at near, near school end, but not, not at right at school end, like right where we used to have the picnic in June, there could be some sort of school end bingo celebration or something that involved, but it would be more family oriented. Family. Um, I, why did the picnic get moved from June to September? I don't know. It was a long time ago. It was, be, I think, it was because um, we thought it was better to catch people when they came back mm. than to try to catch them just before they left. It was just a lot of people that 
were just moving into vacation mode, I'll say, or and the end of school stuff was going on. Um, and the, probably the weather is even better in September than in June, strangely, but um, might have been a factor. I don't know. We've kind of, you know, it was probably the real reason is just it was personally whoever was managing it <laughs> kind of had a preference. I thought that was you, John. <laughs> yeah, not the pound picnic. That was who was before you. It was um, it was uh, Simone for a little while. Um, if you remember her, Simone Laval was her name. Yeah, now, I do. Um, and then I can't remember. And then um, there was also who was the kind of the big guy that was to chair for a little while. Um, I'm going to blank on his name. He was anyway. So um, I, you know, I know for him, he he didn't even want to do zots to tots, right? Okay. So we actually dropped the tots for a year or two because he thought he his big thing was let's do one thing well um and he focused around the town picnic uh, i could probably look up his name he was on the pv forum a fair amount too um huh. i mean kind of a tech guy so i really do think it was more like you know something like that just deciding <laughs> what was best for what he thought was best and everybody else going, okay. Well, how about this? How about, um, I think I would like, if someone wants to sign up for it, just look into what like a casino night may cost because we're going to be coming up on our budget cycle here. And um, I'd like to be able to, if we need to justify our budget, it's going to be a tough year for budgets, I'm, I'm assuming, given the town situation. Um, how much did we, uh, how, what was the net? Do you, do you know what the total was that we net, for the, what we spent minus what we got from donations? For, tri from tr for trivia, well, if, if your number, yeah. the numbers you gave me for wine, beer, and ice. So what I have yeah. is that um, we had a budget with of 1500 and we took in 706 dollars and we actually spent 1513 uh dollars mm. so essentially but uh, so what should i say to that take out the 706 net, net it, it out it would be it would it's yeah. eight eight hundred and seven dollars yeah, frankly, that sounds like nothing to me. Just, you know, yeah, I agree. I agree, but I think yeah. casino night would be probably more. You, you, you know, need triple, to... triple that easily. You... Now, I'll you be happy to look into it. I'll okay, be happy great. to look into it. I'll call some companies. I okay. have uh, I have some friends that have thrown casino night parties, so I'll check and see who they rented stuff from but their things were very high end so yeah I, they probably also get hired people and everything right yeah like yeah party. the whole it was the whole thing and it was you know right. james bond theme so everybody was <laughs> dressed appropriate you know so it was uh i think different than what we would put on so anyway okay so cindy you'll check in i'll check with my friends and see if yeah. they have the name of who they rented all this stuff from. I know so, that we used to do that for eighth grade graduations, always have casino, you know, gambling tables up for the eighth graders. And so you can just get the tables and the stuff. You don't need to. So I, I will, I'll check into companies. Okay. Yeah, Thank I think you. we use all beers for everything else, right? Including dealers. Say that again. I think we would have volunteers. Oh yeah, we'd have volunteers. I'm sure there's a lot of gambling people in this town. Right. <laughs> I know. I know they'd be fixing those decks like crazy. <laughs> okay, we'll do. All right. Okay. Great. Hey, job can, can I just again ask though? Because between you know, we, what we talked about was what is bingo? There's um, name that tune. There's that trivia tune. night. There's casino night. What what are what is the general sense here of what would be the best next thing to do? Well, name that tune. Another thing I was thinking is, is I wonder if we should do a survey. Um, 
somebody had talked about talent, a talent show that this was <laughs> no, that was. And, and then also people have mentioned board games and then, um, you know, things like charades, something like that. So we could, we could either survey or we could just decide. Yeah. Trouble with the survey is you're going to get, you know, you're going to get so many things coming out of the woodwork. True. Yeah. Uh, I think we got charades. We thought it'd be hard to do with like a hundred people. Yeah, it would be. It'd yeah, be really little hard. Pockets, yeah. I think. I'm not saying you know, with like a Pictionary or a, um, yeah, yeah. You know, a game like that. You have to have little pockets. Of right. Well, or you you have okay. The way I was, it depends on how many teams there are, but you have two teams competing, and then the team that wins stays in, and the next team comes up and challenges, and then eventually you have to change it. But you kind of have brackets, so you do it that way. Yeah, but there's a lot of dead time then for a lot of people. Well, the, people are watching. You know, they have to watch the, anyway. They have to watch. <laughs> well, they, they don't have to, but the entertainment is watching these two teams play, right? Try to guess that. So. I see that. Yeah. I don't know. I kind of like Casino. Um, name that tune. I'm kind of look warm on it. I, I kind of agree with John. It might be kind of too much of a one trick pony um bingo i think would be kind of fun to make like an afternoon event or an after school event or something like that um have you guys done bingo recently because i uh, you know my sense is it just sounds boring to me but <laughs> i haven't done it you know, in a long time might be well you know i, I Again, I was thinking about this and it, it would be fun if it were around a certain theme. So like somebody said they had disco bingo and it was really fun. Or you could do Halloween bingo, bingo where people are in costume. I don't know what all the themes are for bingo, but I, I can look into that and see. So it becomes more than just uh, just sitting around playing bingo like you find in the you know, like what a grandma senior did. center. What? Grandma. Like yeah, what grandma at, did. Yeah. At the church, in the church basement. Yeah. Yeah. She had like five or six cards. You didn't mess with grandma. And she was playing <laughs> bingo. I don't know. Board games would be hard. Again, yeah. you'd have to have, you know, like a Monopoly table, I guess, and a clue table. How about a clue? Is there something with like a murder mystery or something? I th that is a clue. Um, but there's all sorts now. There's risk. There's um, all sorts of war games. There's a huge what number of war games out there. Not just the well, classic Scrabble. The, mur the murder mystery is, I don't know how many people you could play with that with, but you all have a character. You can't go with like got, 100, 100 people. You could? No, you can't. Oh, yeah. No, it has to be a smaller sort of event because everybody has a role in it. Yeah. Here's an idea, even though kind of started with more mystery because they, they do have that thing. It's not, we, we're not talking board games. It's just other things, but it would be hard to set up. But what we could do is an escape the room. Um, have you guys been to escape the rooms? Oh, yeah. 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 I've been I mean, there we, four of them, I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I, that's fun. one where I think, you, yeah, They're and you run really people fun. into it, right? You can do it with 100 people, I think, over a certain amount of time. You just schedule them every 15 minutes or something, and they go through. I think that's what happens with Escape the Rooms, right? It's like every 30 minutes or something. Well, no. and it, you go through. No, we had, we had two hours. There were eight of us, and you had a time limit of two hours to get out. Yeah, but that's for one play. You, you you could have I mean the, when you went there you weren't the only ones at that place, right? There was no, we were the only ones in that room. Yeah. In the room, yeah. yeah. So you could have, yeah. but you know, the whole you could set it up however escape the room people do it, right? Which where they have a whole bunch of people going through there. I mean that's how they make their money, right? Um, and there's I'm there's probably sure. com companies that can come to you and set it up, 
right? We'd sure. have to hire hire somebody to come in and maybe do it. But okay. It's an idea. I do like um Sydney, you mentioned Scrabble. I mean Scrabble might be one of the board games that lends itself. I mean, you'd have a table, but to Karen's point, you might have like a bracket going where the winner of the Scrabble game moves up and I don't know. But Scrabble would be kind of interesting. You have to think about board I, games. The, the thing about board games is, is they can last a long time. Yeah. So it's hard to... To so rotate. Yeah. Time yeah. Yeah. I mean, unless you do like duplicate bridge or something, but I think we've got enough. Yeah, bridge bridge. Bridge. yeah. You know, there's another, the games that um, I find you, you can do with uh, a group of people that are fun because I find most of the ones we've talked about are just, again, it's um, they're not, not that, you know, they, they're a little slow, but there's a couple, there's code names. You guys know code names? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I find people can throw a party, you know, with whatever it is, 10 people and play yeah. code names. Right. And, and there's another one like that called uh, Wits and Wagers. Um, and so there's certain games that are more are better for parties, I'll say, than, you know, a Scrabble or Monopoly or Risk or any, yeah. you know, fashioned. What's the one? Um, is it Little Apple, Green Apple? Apple, apple. Little, yeah. little green apples, I think. Is apples to apple. apples. Apples to apples. Apples, yeah. apples to apples. Yeah. That's a fun yeah, yeah. one. So that's, yeah, that's similar to and code then they names. They have the or... uh, R-rated one. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, what's Which that called again? Which is even more fun. But... Right. Okay, well, I think we've got okay. enough ideas. I mean, I... am I... Am I correct in assuming that we probably will not do anything before the picnic? I think it sounds that way. Yeah. If we don't do anything before the picnic, I think we're talking about a year from now. That's my guess. Because um, when else would we do it? When did we do it last time? We said nine months ago. May. So, so it was May. So that's why I would think it's either May so February, only three months yeah. from now, you know, or a year from now. Well. Or the other thing we could do is look at November and May. The picnic just is by itself in September, and then November and May aren't they six months apart? Mm -hmm. So, I wouldn't. I would. I'm not sure we're ready to do something this May, but we could look at November and then next May. Possible. Yeah. Okay, well, let's get a little more information. Okay, let me look into casino night for sure. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, Karen Hawthorns. Um, you know, there are real there's no new updates from the last meeting where I shared the um designs that were discussed on December 16th. And the reason there are no updates is that. Their next meeting is February 29th. The agenda packet will, with material and visuals, I'm assuming, will be coming out by February 26th. And I plan on um, putting it out on the forum, the link out on the forum, as well as uh, Carrie getting something to Carrie, and she'll send out a separate uh, communication from the town about the meeting. And I do know, um, and then uh patty our ad hoc group is meeting the 27th so we will have a chance to review the agenda material and be submitting some comments in writing um and i do know some other residents um have submitted uh comments the the folks from um the nathorst area about the potential entrances and safety issues and things like that so the good news is, is people are engaging a bit, at least that live nearby. But I think there's a lot of people that are very unaware. And I was actually surprised. I Somebody called me 
yesterday who's on committees and is always speaking at meetings and she is not on the PV forum. So we can't assume when things are sent out via email that whether it's on the forum or from the town that people see them. I, I was surprised at that. What are you going to do though? People have that opportunity, you know? Yeah. I, at this point we can't do much of anything, but it just, you know, I, I it kind of opened my eyes only because as I said, this is an engaged individual who speaks at a lot of town meetings and things like that. And is not on the forum. So, um, so I don't know if anyone has any questions, but there's really nothing there to report until probably next month when they've had the meeting and there's been a lot of resident comments and suggestions and things. Okay. Okay. Thank you again for doing that. Mm -hmm. um, I just looked at the drill uh, agenda and realized I don't have zots on the agenda. Um, is there anything we need to talk about? Zots well, you have slash town picnic. Oh, zots to tots. I was going to say you have the parking at Rosati's as number uh, as I, but you meant the town picnic. I meant the town picnic. Pic picnic and zots to tots. Um, the one thing that I wanted to mention is um, Sarah, for some reason, is still looking to me or Parks and Rec to think about doing something for the town's 60th anniversary. And in fact, at trivia night, Judith Hasco stopped by the wine table and said, oh, I hear you're doing something. <laughs> I said, okay, I guess I am. Um, Maybe we have a go. 60s band. We have named that tune of 60s music. Oh, wow. call Mike. So, call Mike. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, Mike. Actually, that's before his time. He's he's really very uh, centered in the 70s. It's very 70s. <laughs> um, I did actually talk to John Badger, who is chair of the Cultural Arts Committee, because uh, I wanted to get his ideas and potentially maybe you know, tie it into a 60s band or something. Um, he said their schedule is all set. They've got the Palooza coming up and they've got three nights of bands, none of them 60s bands. And he was really hesitant to try and wrap a 60th anniversary thing about one of, around one of their events um, Palooza, he said, there's just not time. Um, and the concert series, just kind of a different crowd. Um, and he kind of defaulted to, I think what Sarah is defaulting to is that the town picnic is a logical forum to potentially do something about the town celebration. Um, and I can't disagree with that. I just don't want to plan it. <laughs> well, we have to talk, we can talk about what it really means, because I think we did do that for the 50th, right? Um, I think there there was a whole big celebration for the 50th. There was. Some, yeah. Um, but I it wasn't at the town picnic. It was a whole separate. Separate. Yeah. Yeah. What it, was it? I don't remember. And I, I do was here. One thing was at the Priory and there was concerts. Was it like a blues and barbecue like we used to have? It was we more didn't. like that. I thought there was so, a theme at the too, but I don't know. How about the historical committee can research that and get back to us on on what was done for the 50th? And maybe the historical That's committee will, will actually have some ideas on. Well, we, we do have one idea, and I'm on the historical committee, <laughs> which I know you know, Karen. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Nancy and I were thinking it might be nice to have a tea for all the residents who have been here for 60 years. Um, so, so that would be very specific to them. 
but would not be like a town-wide celebration. But I could certainly go back and ask what was done for the 50th and just see if we can get some ideas. Yeah, that would be I good. Can, I, you can ask Beth. I bet she remembers because she was, you know, it was, it was a little bit tight. everything. Yeah. Well, I also, I have an idea. It's not, it's, this is just the seedling. It's a germination. Okay, so what about, and this is a plan words, we set up a walk down memory lane. Oh. And, and <laughs> in the, we use like the community center um, and it actually have kind of a path that you follow that shows the history of Portola Valley and photos of, you know, Bill Lane and Dwight Crowder and, you know, sort of something like that. So it's not, it's a, it's a tribute and it's something that gives a memory lane, but it's, it's just set up as an aside thing. I'm not sure that's going to do it, but that's an idea. I, like I kind of like it. It'd be an exhibit that could be there for a week or two. Yeah. Huh. Let's not forget Neville Heister. <laughs> <laughs> How will we ever forget? <laughs> Okay, well, I'll do something there. The way it's uh, all on the internet. I just was Googling the 50th celebration. You know, it was in the Almanac and other oh. things. Um, I think we can figure it out pretty fast uh, in terms of what it was. I just need to pull these different things up and see what they say. Um, but 2014 marks the 50th year, and it goes through kind of what the, we had a celebration, apparently, as we raised the flag on January 16th. Anyway, um, just note that you can Google it. <laughs> <laughs> Google um, history. So we'll all think of some ideas. Um, well, I, my other thought is, is just that do we really, um, by the way, it was, this is a big celebration September 21st, which is right when we do the town picnic. Oh, um, oh and, I wonder. It was at the picnic then. No, the, the picnic well, used to be in I, June. Ten years ago, was it in June? Mm, I think so. It moved around a bit, and but that, I, I still think we, I don't think we want to do anything more than the picnic, personally. I mean, we're already kind of saying we got to wait a year to do even a, you know, trivia night or whatever it is. Uh, but I, I would think we can tie in um, the, the celebration to the town picnic somehow. It may be even make it a major part of the theme of the picnic and you have everything, but maybe you do some things there that are 60th anniversary. Yeah, related. I mean, I was just thinking special area with 60 residents, have a 60s type band, have the town council give some speeches. I, I know, I don't know. Um, and, and they had dunk tanks in the 60s. <laughs> yeah. They and did. Eat, we can put the town council Aaron, members. You're not going to be here. So <laughs> no. I am not going to do a dunk take. Dang. Unless you're there to supervise it. End of well, discussion. What if I if, if I get a I get somebody to fill in for me? Nope. I have someone with my no, shoot. Nope, not okay. going to happen. <laughs> I do I do have something. I'm I'm going to change the subject because I did think about it. And um, I know with the zots to tots, the ending is always a mess with and the cyclists and the runners. This has been talked about. And I, what I don't know because I haven't participated in in the run or the race in a long time is is it possible to do a staggered start and put the bikes first so that they're coming through the finish line and they're not messing with the runners? Well, I'm just they, throwing it. I'm throwing that. They do out get there. there. They get there a lot faster. The bikes definitely go through first. No, yeah, but, but if you if you even start. had them start first, so they're just out of the way. They're not even in with the runners. They're not really with the runners. I mean, they are out so fast that um, it, and I don't. I don't think there's much mix but, with with them. What's the trouble then with the finish line? I they just. They're just going at 20 miles an hour, 
<laughs> and there's a bunch of them. They're not running into um, the runners behind them so much, I don't think. The runners. Well, there are know, still little kids on bikes that aren't going as fast. Um, they're staying with their parents or something. I mean, they're not going as fast, but there, there are still people on bikes coming through with the runners. Yeah, the little yeah. kids, the, tiny, the tiniest little kids, like the, the six-year-olds. Yeah, I would think. Um, and but they, they have to be with their parents. You know, yeah, I don't think they're going to send them off a six-year-old. You know, off by himself or herself. Yeah, I think I'm going to pull. John, you and me, and maybe Bill together before Zots and just see if we can't think of a. Did you plan. use cones to make lanes for runners versus bikes? We have, and we did that last year. Put the cones like 100 yards away from the finish line. And we had a big sign, big sign, yeah. like five feet. Bikes this way, runners this way. And you know yeah, happened? everybody started crisscrossing because they were in the race. Oh. <laughs> okay, because <laughs> they're racing, you know. Oh, yeah, I think they're racing to get <laughs> each other on the bikes. <laughs> okay, it, that was, it. We thought it would help, and I it said, sounds like it. I mean, that's extent. my idea. Is it would help? Yeah, but it doesn't. Yeah, I know. Help. I know. <laughs> I mean, if they would stay, I know John separates them at the beginning. In fact, because he had to switch them this last year because we had the right. arrows going the other direction. But <laughs> if they would stay in that lane, it would be okay, but they don't. You know, they fall over the place. Yeah, I mean, it's a wide road and they want to take the full road. As soon as they get, you know, 100 yards out and right. they're out in front of the runners, then they spread out. Um, the runners are the opposite. It. They want to stay close to the shortest side, shortest distance. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's keep moving here. Um, discuss uh, tennis, pickleball, court, outstanding topics. Okay. Drum roll. Hey! Drum roll. Oh? We have a tennis net on court number on three. three. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just to put it up last week. Oh, I didn't notice. I was just there today. No, I know you don't that. notice. I didn't notice either. And I'm, you uh -huh. know. <laughs> yeah. I sent it out to Howard and I said, hey, what's the status? And he's like, it's already up there. What do you <laughs> I felt so bad. So anyway. has there been any has there been any feedback at all? Yeah, none. Not that I've heard. Okay. Yeah, so I, I contacted um, Howard and I contacted uh, the guy who sits at the desk, Diego, and I contacted Justin to see if anybody has complained whatsoever about anything or no, nets or anything. And no one has said anything, but they feel very strongly that it's because it's winter. Yeah. Well, and it's how true. I have not seen a tennis player in, in literally two months. It's been so wet. They just don't come out. So, you know nobody's they, noticing they didn't then but they haven't repainted the lines they've no. only put the net on no they, yeah, can't, but they can't repaint until, until it's dry after rainy season well, okay there's, there's, there's tennis lines on there already right oh, right. Yeah, they're, right they're on there oh, but there yeah. are a lot of other lines, the lines. Okay. Okay. Very distracting. so we want and it to look much nicer it looks really nice they did a great job yeah they um, did and that's where we're going to put court of madeira so Court of Madeira is going to do courts two and three, which will leave court one open, which is good. Um, and we'll see how the feedback is from yeah. both basketball players, although I don't know how we're going to get feedback from that group. Cindy, you might have to kind of wander over if you see basketball players there. Yeah, they're there and a lot, and I will. I wander just over. Ask them, yeah. Is it getting in the way? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Um, and then for the pickleball nets, uh, I think we'll just leave them out and uh, continue. Yeah, he wants to, to leave them out through, 
spring and look for feedback in the in the drier months, which is fine with me because no one's complained yet, but there really hasn't been anybody to complain. Yeah. So it's um yeah. What and I do Howard, I see, Howard said that you know come spring we'll look at repainting court three. And he said, you know, depending on how much money we want to spend as a town, which has no money by the way, um, you know, is it just resurfacing and painting or is it just repainting? So we'll look at our options come spring. Yeah. Well, if there's no there's money, money, resurfacing is expensive. Yeah. You know, repainting is not. Well, he seemed to think we could even just paint over, not paint the whole court. Just, just paint, paint over, over the lines. lines that we don't want. Yeah, for now, that'd be fine. And even that would be better. Yes, it would. It would. And I did talk to, you know, leaving the nets up all the time. It's the first time that I have come onto the courts and found families there which kind of pleased me, you know, that people can come out whenever they darn well please and use those nets. Yeah. Whereas when we had them locked up, they couldn't do that. And so I, I, I run over and talk to those people. So how do you like having the nets all? <laughs> and of course they like it because, you know, even though they all have their own equipment, you know, it's amazing to me, people who don't play pickleball always have the equipment. <laughs> anyway. So, so far I've, I've had, I think that's, that's the one thing I have noticed. But like I said, I haven't seen a tennis player in literally two months. It's so wet. Well, I, I think your goal for the next year, Cindy, is to get Agassi and Graf playing McEnroe <laughs> and Sharapova <laughs> on our courts. Hey, I have the number two in the country coming to give us a clinic. I know. The I, number I, two. It's <laughs> not Andre Agassi. And no, no, Graf. no. It's a pickleball John player. McEnroe <laughs> and Maria Sharapova. It's Riley so, Newman. <laughs> okay, well, that's great news for the courts. Yeah. Okay, uh, anything you want the dog park? Okay, so um, the answer from my end is no, but I do have kind of a funny story. There was a gentleman from Midpen that spoke at a town council meeting. And I went because I wanted to see if he was going to say anything about Hawthorns and he didn't. And he's from the, like the legal affairs group or something and talked more broadly about what Midpen is doing, you know, with sort of with all its parks. But I asked him if he could direct me to the right person at Midpen to talk about the off leash dog areas. And, um, and because we'd like to do something like that in Portola Valley. And so he went back and then he sent me an email and said, you know, I talked to somebody and Midpen doesn't have any off-leash dog areas. So I sent him an e email back yes, and do. I said, well, it's funny because I've just been to one and here it is. And I showed, I sent the information about the site. So he, um, he was very nice. And he said, you know, you learn something new every day. And he went and researched it. And he said that this one at Pulgus Riggs, Ridge has been there since 1995. Wow. And that no, it's sort of like, you know, there's not a lot of institutional learning there, but, and there's never, you know, they haven't had issues with it. It just kind of is there. I haven't, um, talk to anyone at San Mateo County, but I thought, Patty, you were also going to connect with Sarah about um, Spring Down. I thought that you were going to talk to her about Spring Down and they were going to review the, the I think it was in the minutes, yeah. language. I thought. Let me see. Because you have had a conversation with her about the dog park, I right? Did, and, and her and her positive support for finding something. Right. So I did have the oh, attorney says, look at the spring down yeah. easement. Um it doesn't say that I've no it was about. it was from a couple meetings ago. It wasn't from the last meeting. So I I I have talked to Sarah. Okay. Sarah is very supportive. Um, she thinks Springdown is a perfect location for it. 
Um, so what, uh, what do we do now then? And maybe we're going to talk to Sharif, but about if we have a fenced area, some of the fencing needs modifying, how do we move forward trying to even make it a pilot? You know, do you see what I'm saying? Like testing it out. Or, but we've also talked about that if there's no enforcement of the other areas of town, it's not really going to work. Change. I think that was the conversation I had with Sarah, which is until the town council or the town um, enforces it, people aren't going to go over to spring down because it's not as nice as soccer field. Um, I think that was the last conversation. I think what we might have to do, and I have talked to Sharif about it, and Sharif is very supportive, but he said, you know, quite frankly, on the hierarchy of things that the town needs to work on, this is not even in his top 10. Um, but he's very supportive. Uh, I think what I would think about doing I could be redundant, is asking Catherine, I still think spring down, in fact, I know spring down would just raise a stink if we put dogs on that property. <laughs> um, and but there, do you know what? There, there are people walking their dogs on that property all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And they're, and they're off leash. I understand so, that, but that's, they would say that's not, they don't want that. Um, I don't think there's anything in the easement that specifically prohibits it, but I would like the attorney to tell me that. Um, and then the second thing with Sarah is, I think we're still kind of in a very precarious position with spring down because last I heard we're still trying to buy the land that Jeremy screwed up um, and that we're trying to get back into good graces with spring down and I don't think this would help um, so I think of the grand grander scheme of things I think I, I need to circle back and talk to Sarah about kind of where this would land on our priorities as a town. Okay. okay. And in, in our in the master plan of parks and recreational facilities. Yes. Okay. All right. And I, I will still do some research with San Mateo County. I just haven't found the right person there. Okay. Okay, um, recreational facilities opportunities. I haven't done anything here. I should probably dig that back out and kind of keep it fresh. I'll do that for the next meeting. Um, California State Grant, I did get a notice from Howard that the deadline for submittals has been extended to June. It was January. Um, but I, I just, I, I'm still having a hard time coming up with what we would use the money for. It's $200,000, which is not enough to for restrooms at Ford Field. Um, it's not. We don't have a dog park to be able to do anything with yet. Um, obviously we don't have the playground to do anything with yet. Um, Howard mentioned something about cleaning up Triangle Park. Is there something we could do there? I don't know. Um, I don't hang out there. Um, is there any ideas that you might have 
other than what I've mentioned, um, that we could use two hundred thousand dollars for. Resurface the tennis courts. I was going to say a court courts, a new court or bocce Maybe. courts. If we had place to put courts. <laughs> <laughs> that's the problem is where to put the courts if we could find a place for them where the horse tooth or where the horse uh, shoe thing is <laughs> i don't know where that is even <laughs> it's 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 uh, next to court three court number three they, is they it really yeah they wouldn't even let us uh you know put a fence there so they're not, i don't think they're going to pave it no i don't think so either that's the what does he call that? The scenic corridor. It's very precious. What about what about I'm 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 being serious. What about bocce courts? A couple of bocce courts. Yeah, we were just talking about that, but where? It's where? Where do you where do you see any land anywhere that they'll let us use? Well it's that last part I guess, of the sentence. I see lots okay. of land. Yeah, but not that they'll <laughs> so, let us use. I guess this wouldn't work, but I could see putting it between the library, you know, the, in, where they have the concerts, but that wouldn't work, I guess. Um, no. Because it's actually, it would get less leaves in it too, because that's a better spot for something like that. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's it doesn't take up as much space as what I was thinking. It can they can be Los Altos put in a couple bocce courts at their new community center, and they're lovely. There's an arbor there, and they're right next to the building, and they have lighting. So um, lights, no lighting. No. They have. <laughs> they don't have. It's like it's like decorative lighting. It's not. You can't be out there past like Sunday nine. Yeah. yeah. But it's, you know, it's just, I'll, I'll try to see if I can find pictures and share with you. No, well, you took comments. space for a pickleball court. I mean, I, the even comments I got I on the go survey down. when I did the courts is someone suggested we light the courts so people <laughs> could play at night. They're like, that's going to happen. It's never going to happen. Mm -hmm. downward, you know, just downward lighting. Last, anyway. last time we, we got 250 thousand dollars and and uh we were able to renovate all of ford field and it's because we raised another two hundred fifty thousand dollars um to do it so i i wouldn't downplay the two hundred thousand dollars first of all because you can you can really add to that um we it would be great if we could find a space but i actually think we might be able to pull off um the bathrooms at ford field if by going to little league and susan ford and saying, can you give us a hundred thousand dollars or one hundred and fifty thousand dollars? That's what happened last time. We raised, you know, there was another probably fifty thousand or so raised, uh, and we could probably do that too. But um, and I know it's not as interesting as these other things. You know, I, the other things, the bigger issue I think is is the space. But um, I wouldn't write it off because of the cost, right? I think we might be able to get that money if we make an effort. And specifically, yeah, I, you have to have a project to, when you're applying for this grant to say, this is the project we wanna do. We don't have bathrooms in Fort Field. It's a little league field to choose this many days a year, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and right. What is, what is the cost? Is it because bringing water in? What's the big cost of these bathrooms? They're not chemical? Or I mean, what are you, are you thinking flush toilets? There, and everything? There, yeah, there's no um, water line or, I don't even know what the sewer, if there's a there, sewer line there's on no that. Water, there's no sewer line. You'd have to bring it in. It's huge. Um, yeah. It, it'd be from and, Western. And also, I think, didn't Justin tell us there was a, you know, the, the 75 foot setback. We couldn't put the bathrooms um, where the little hut is now because that's within the 75 foot easement. So then there's no space for the bathrooms if we do that. Yeah. I I also think because of Ford Field and this housing element is so up in the air that it's it's might be hard to get the other funding we need for it. But I we should I should never say never. I mean you gotta try. If they actually build housing there, then there would be water lines and sewage right next door. Is that not true? 
It's true. I yeah, mean, but that's not going to happen for eight years or something, right? So six years, and maybe never. Hopefully, um, I mean that's say that's what we actually submitted the grant for originally. Um, I mean, it's never been approved because we showed on there that we had to get an additional $300,000 worth of funding. Um, I don't know if we submit it, if, if we can put like a hold on it, like submit it before June and then it's like, you know, uh, kept in escrow for lack of a better word for us until we can, you know, get the additional funding. Um, I mean, John, I agree. I, I think that's the number one thing that we need. The others are kind of nice to haves, um, so to speak. I mean, they would be great to have, but bathrooms at Ford Field are just, I mean, it's ridiculous that we've gone this long without bathrooms there. Yeah. Um, Especially if you, have, we, if you have to go down there and use them, but they have, it's just terrible. It's awful. Frankly. Are they the uh, temporary things that are there? Yeah, they're porta potties. They have porta potties, and they're frankly, they're disgusting. They, uh, you know, they have the bigger structures, including you know, as well as the regular ones. But um, you know, it's it's not much, much different than any porta potty, except they they seem particularly dirty whenever I'm down there. You know, I think they is, get used by a lot of um, a lot of non baseball. Yeah, maybe. people too. I think there's a lot of construction truck. I've seen you see a lot of trucks in the lot and stuff like that. So yeah, they were they're supposed to lock them when they're not in use for little league. Oh. They were supposed they were supposed to. Not yeah. saying if they did or not. I don't know. They were supposed so, to. Yeah. Okay. Well. well can I share my screen to show you these bocce courts that Los Altos put in? No, no. I just wanted just so you have an image because yeah, they, can go, they can yeah. go next to a building. It's not like they have to be out in a field. Hang on one second. Except I have so many things on my, oops. How do I get rid of this? Can you guys see this? Yeah. Yeah. This, this is the community center right here. So the doors lead outside to it, and then they have this arbor, and they have these two bocce courts. Wow, doesn't that look nice? Isn't that lovely? That's lovely. So it would be something where maybe it could be outside the community center. So that's all. And now I'll unshare my screen. We should look behind the community center. Where? Well, the soccer field's there. Where, where are you? Is it right there, right up against the building? Where? More or less. I'll have to, I'd have to walk around. We'd, we'd have to see. There might be some space there. That that actually isn't a bad idea. Yeah, let's just so, walk around. I'll, or I'll around or that time. lawn area outside those, um, behind where the softball field is, between the building and the picnic tables, there's lawn area there a little yeah. bit that you could, build, you could put bocce courts you in there. You could put bocce courts there. I, I'm not, I'm not. It's not at the top of my list, but I'm I throwing it out as an idea. I love the idea. So. Okay. Do you know how much space it is? Do you have a measurement? I, I don't have an exact measurement. I was over there because we were looking at renting them for a private party. Um, uh, you can look up. I, I have oh, to say know, like 20, are, 20 feet, are, there yeah. were two, two lanes, maybe no more than 20 feet by whatever the length of a bocce court is, 60 feet. I think you can make them whatever you want, but I don't know what the, let me look up what the size uh, of a people court. <laughs> yeah. You know, the best space, if you can get the bocce courts to look like it's natural, you know, yeah. you know where you that have the structure. Natural. Um, then you might be able to put it where um, next to the all sports court, where that picnic cave, where the where the horseshoe pit is, and it's that's why, by the way, the horseshoe pit was is there and was able to be there because it it literally looks natural. 
again, you, you don't even see it, right? And I so, have never seen it. <laughs> it's right there. Um, I need to replace yeah. the poles. And, you know, by the way, now it's been 15 years, maybe, and nobody still has stolen the horseshoes. <laughs> I, don't know. I, have got I thought it was going to last a week. <laughs> I thought it was going to last a week, and it's been like 15 Bungie years. courts need a specific surface, though. Well, if it has yeah. to be flat. It has to be a very smooth, has to be that yeah. special, you know, whatever it is. It's a fine yeah. sand. It looks very groomed, which I'm sure the Conservation Committee would like. You can always ask. It, it looks, you know what, it looks more natural than the tennis courts. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea. I think it's a cool idea. You have to be maintained too. That's the uh, but they... yeah, and that's why putting them under trees is not a good I idea. Know. There's a lot of trees there. Oh my god, the big one it dumps all over those courts. Right. So next to the community center might be a better place. Better option. It's no trees. Yeah. I like that idea of behind the softball diamond. By the, picnic about tables. The, by the picnic but those are trees those are redwood trees right there yeah no, you don't want to oh. there's still a lot of space like where i have the town picnic and i put all the tables there's that's quite a bit the of space out there that's the outfield the outfield no <laughs> i, I the can outfield. tell you there's, not, there's no there's no no space. you say you, you know what? The trees. it's right, all the softball but... field. it gets the trees and the playground no, but to in left field, like on the foul line, think of left field foul line and behind the fence, <laughs> but behind the fence there where the temporary fence is, you guys hit it out, but it isn't technically part of the softball field. You're hitting it out of the softball field if you hit it out there along that foul line. And it's like that outside, area over there. There's grass. Like right outside the kitchen? Yes. Yeah. There's a very little bit of grass and it's... The, the softball field goes literally right up to the fan, to the tree because we put out the, we put the fence as far out as we can put it because people can hit over it. People can hit it over the plate. I think I'm anyway. going to look and see if there's any space. Okay, um, parking in Rosati Sport Field. I don't have an update. I continue to ask Corey for what the status is, and she ignores me. <laughs> so I don't know what to do. Um, and then we are no longer a Brown Act committee. Yay! Yay. Anything else? Okay, Leslie. Let me know, I know. Okay, going Leslie, back to you have to stop talking. <laughs> going, just real quick, going back to the money, can we can we talk to Howard about the bathrooms and just have him scope it somehow or ask him what he would need to to do to scope it. Um the bathrooms well, I, asked him that. I did ask him that. Yeah. Yes. And he uh he used the cost of what they did to put in the Windy Hill bathrooms, which was sure. half a million. But that was yes. the same number that he used when we renovated Ford Field, half a million. Wow. Um, Aren't so, the wind? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, if if that's all it is, again, I, I I can envision, and if we really think we could apply for it, I can envision the simple, simply going in, and well, he would have to figure out where to put it, right? Is the other part of scoping it to put them right so that they're um, you can get plumbing to it, and it's not um, it's not within any setbacks. So we would still need him. And to kind of let us know that's that it's feasible uh, but if he did it's a, it's a relatively quick conversation around the other money right so we could tell susan ford and little league say if you guys are willing to put in a hundred thousand um, dollars we're going to apply for this grant and if we get it we're going to expect you to put in your money right um i i think they'll do it i actually think both of them will do it well dave think, when he was Mm -hmm. We still, well, we talked about this over a year ago. Dave was pretty confident mm -hmm. that Little League would put the money in. Yeah, I do too. They have it. Um, 
And I, I think Susan Ford would likely too. I think they, you know, there's a foundation. Yeah. Um, so, so anyway, so, but I think it starts with, uh, to really get that going, I think it starts with Howard. Okay. Uh, All right. I'll, I'll, I'll get more serious about it. I'll talk to him. I, are yeah. the toilets at Windy Hill? I thought those were pit toilets. Has it, I haven't. Flush toilet. They're not, they're not like. They're not flush toilets. No. Are they chemical? I, I I haven't been there in so long. I haven't used them. I remember they're they not were pretty nice. I mean, you well, know, as nice as nice as they can be. Better than a porta potty, but they better were better than a porta potty. Yeah. So okay. But uh, if they don't need plumbing, that makes a huge difference. If there's a way to set them up where you don't need the, if it's a chemical toilet, I I don't yeah. know. Then you get into the maintenance of, yeah, you know, cleaning and emptying and, yeah, and understand. Okay, I'll talk to Howard. Okay, anything else? Okay, thanks everybody. Thank you. Hey, thank thank you. you. Good night. All right, I'll come. I'll come by at seven tomorrow, Patty. Seven. Thank you. Okay. All, All right. right. Thanks. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.